Hi, and welcome to Highbrow Lowbrow. I'm your host, Sean. With me here is Ron Sensei. Each week, we get together to discuss a well-regarded, highly received film against a cheesy blockbuster. Basically, an artsy farty film versus a mindless good time. So uh, this week, we are talking about um, something that I put Ron a little bit of a pickle in, a uh, romantic drama, and we'll see how he dealt with that. Well, he said romance, so romance, big genre. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that's good. Sure. <laughs> so uh, let's just get right into it. Um, first up is my pick, uh, Abbas Kurastami's uh, certified copy. Ron, cheers. Cheers. Abbas Kurastami's certified There's copy is about English author James, who meets French store owner L, and the two hit it off, deciding to spend a free day together. They travel to a nearby town, get coffee, visit a museum, and pretend to be recently married in what turns out to be a popular wedding destination. As these two strangers get to know each other, however, it becomes clear there's more to their new relationship than meets the eye. So, Ron, uh, what did you think of this highbrow pick? You know how that expression goes? It's like, how old pe people fuck? This is like it. This is the movie equivalent of how old people fuck. Um, to be fair, the acting was phenomenal. Uh, I like the way it was shot, things like that, blah, 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 all that stuff. But, oh my goodness, it's just, I guess maybe this is a chick flick that this is the routine, this is the, this is the template. They just go on and on, walking around, meandering, talking about stuff, backtracking, then talking about it, you know, different things. They argue, they fight. Uh, the story is very interesting only because you're kind of trying to figure out whether, okay, is this make-believe? Are they really married? Uh, was there any sort of mystery that we missed? Are they trying to pretend uh, just to console each other? Are they playing with each other's fantasy? Yada, yada, yada. But it's not really going anywhere. Was there, is there like a symbolism there? there? There's some philosophizing that's happening about art. Certainly, the movie's title is Certified Copy. And they keep talking about that original versus a copy, which is more authentic this and that and then it kind of goes along with the story i guess they it is a cert certified copy of what had happened before i'm thinking but at the same time as a viewer i don't know maybe hey maybe i'm when i'm geriatric or something i don't know maybe i'll i'll uh it didn't vibe with me very well I, I felt like it was really, really boring. It wasn't going anywhere. I mean, I'm talking shit about old people right now, but if you look at As Good As It Gets with Jack Nicholson, that's a way better romance than this. This just, it doesn't go anywhere. And you can't even distinguish the characters from each other on one on one hand, the guy was like the one that's being positive, but at some point in the movie, he becomes this cynical jerk that doesn't believe in anything, but he was supposed to be the guy that wrote the book, and now it's the woman, and the woman's like very familiar with the guy at one point, and then suddenly she's going to bring up something about the son. There's an interruption with the phone call. It's supposed to be comedic, but it doesn't really work. It didn't work for me. Anyway, that's that's what I, that's what I thought about. I I definitely got a lot more out of this film than Ron did. Um, I think uh, there's a lot of interesting things sort of happening underneath the surface with this film, um, especially with like the beginning half. I really enjoyed uh, certain elements of the small things. I feel like this movie really focuses is focuses in on and um, examines the small things or small nuances in between a relationship. Um, you, you get it with the kid and his mom, uh, Juliette Binoche and her kid. 
they, they exhibit a real uh, sense of playfulness. Uh, the kid is, is sort of prodding the mom constantly in the beginning of the movie, and it's sort of cute and sort of annoying, and it sort of rides that line. Um, and then, in fact, that's actually mirrored with uh, the uh, male romantic lead, uh, James, I guess, um, who's sort of prodding and playing around with um, Juliette Binoche in the beginning of the film. And, um, and he's having like this light, playful attitude with, uh, with her character. I mean, personally, in the beginning part, that was much more relatable to me, the beginning stages of a relationship where people are playing with each other, where, where people are testing each other. It's fun, it's flirty, it's interesting. Um, I didn't, I, I don't know if it made me uncomfortable, but it, it was a little bit more difficult towards the end because they're like really sort of battling each other as couples stop getting cute and start getting real towards a relationship and, and how relationships progressed over 15 years. So I just thought it was really interesting with that dynamic of having the beginning of a relationship contrasted with the end of a relationship and taking those qualities and bashing them together. I just felt like the acting, the acting kind of made up for the really, really pissy ass story. It's just, I, I hate, you know, like maybe this is the, the artsy fartsy part of it. I, and that's why maybe I, I don't, you know, subscribe to that is because nothing really happened. At the end of it, okay, he pee he he peed, and the bell rang, <laughs> and then that's that's it. What would you get? What would you get out of it? I don't know. They didn't even fuck, you know, <laughs> like no fingering happened, no lubing. I mean, you know, like the whole movie, you know, a romance should be just a process of just getting the pussy wet right like that's the process of it that's a romance movie right you you get to that climax and then the shebang and finally you know boy gets girl and they live happily ever after it doesn't have to be that way it could be a tragedy right romance in general but it didn't really go anywhere that's what i mean right you know like come on man just Eat some blue pills like Eminem. <laughs> if I can get get your shit going. If she was ready, they got the fucking room key. She got her makeup on. They had the fight. You know, she's 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 good to go, man. Like, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> like it didn't go anywhere. Not even fucking. So I I, I disagree with this, um, with the sense that it didn't go anywhere. I think a lot of romance exists in these small memories. And then I think that's what the, the, the sort of point of this film is, is that... Um, What's the point of the film, really? It exists in these small places. It exists but were, in, was there romance? Was it legit? Yes, was for it, sure. Yeah, but was it legit? I mean... Or Definitely. Are they, are they just pretending? I mean, look at... The, look. the best memories, or maybe not the best memories, but ingrained isn't in my head in terms of like my own sense of romance with the person people i've been with is when i've sang them a little song or we've had a little joke together but they're always singing a song based on the copy of the past she's looking at him as her her old husband and for him maybe it's her is his past relationship so they are just an avatar a substitute to Whatever I mean, you know, like right, a certified a cer copy, a certified copy. Yeah, so, no, that, so that, that's what... was there love between them? Was there romance, or were they just jerking themselves off with the past? That's what I'm saying. But like, I think that re that is repeated in relationships. Certified copy meaning a certain sense. Of... This is a fail in romance. This is not romance. This is like, I don't know. The romance exists in those little interactions. The those little games you play with the person you're spending time with little jokes you have the the pretending you're together and you're not together i think the message of the film really boils down to what chris rock said you know having sex in a relationship is key so it's either you're coming or you're going right 
this in this film there was no fucking involved so they went separate ways okay. with blue balls anyway so <laughs> so um, that's what we thought about uh, Abbas Chris Stami's certified copy Ron what did you pick for your lowbrow romantic film a 2019 crime thriller romance directed by Takashi Miike first love tells the story of a boxer and a call girl who become unwittingly involved in a drug smuggling scheme. John, what did you think of First Love? All right, so First Love, I got to get this off the bat first up. Not really a romance. Um, even by your standards, even by your standards, it's not really a romance because no one fucks. It said romance on the thing, so I picked it. And it says First Love. <laughs> Um, yeah, it says first love, so I was but like... there's no, in terms of romantic elements, it's pretty, it's pretty minimal. Um, ah, no, but it was his love, it was love that 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 made him do whatever the fuck he was doing, sure, and and, and stay put and actually, you know, sure, proceed sure. and act on whatever, right? Sure. So, it's, it's a stretch. However, um, judging it based okay, off as of, a film, it it's more of a yakuza, yakuza, you know. It's kind of like a, 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 a what's what? it's kind of like true romance by you know Tarantino's Sh true romance. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like that. It's yeah. like a gangster, gangster uh, action. A lot of uh, dark characters. comedy action type yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. So it it became. I didn't know. I went blind. I saw first love. <laughs> as a romance crime thriller yeah um so uh with this film uh i thought it was uh you know a fun takashi Miike film with a lot uh, a cast of characters that were definitely very unique and fun um i did feel like it was a very sort of light film in its own regard because the characters sort of came in had this sort of big moments and then um you know, it was a it was a, a, a battling of all these big personas, um, and uh, you know all these intermixed elements. You'd see this in um, movies like Reservoir Dogs. It's like a gangster noir film, really. Um, and then you have the the sort of lovelorn hero at the center um, as he's trying to pursue this this particularly damsel in distress. Um, I think in, in in those terms, I think it's a solid film. It's fun. It's it's relatively light uh, there is big themes presented throughout the film in terms of like um uh honor loyalty um chinese versus japanese uh tensions and stuff like that um and they're played somewhat seriously somewhat but more like comedically um so it's generally a very fun film i think it's shot very well i think this fits in with uh, Takashi Miike's general oeuvre. And uh, I think it's, a, it's, it's definitely a solid contribution to his uh, filmography. However, I, I, I would say I've seen better films from him. I've seen more complex, more thoughtful, more deep films. And I felt like this film was a little bit of a throwaway. Uh, and I don't want to be dismiss dismissive with that. But it was a little bit of a just like, let's have fun, let's do a thing, let's big, bring big characters, let's bring big fun, um, let's have a lot of action, um, let's have a lot of big set pieces, uh, that sort of thing. So in that regard, it's a very fun film. Um, anything deeper than that, I don't know if you can really pull anything out, but it does fit the criteria of a lowbrow film, not necessarily a lowbrow romantic film. But that's my take. It's still romantic. Uh, I mean, they try uh, to shoehorn romance in any film, and I think that's <laughs> pretty much the same level that's shoehorned in here. Okay, well, you know what? I'm I'm glad it wasn't a straight up chick flick, and it, you know, like like Sean already said, it's very uh, Tarantino-y, very Guy Ritchie, you know, with the different characters. All the all the characters have their own strong arcs, and basically our our uh, our protagonists, the guy and the girl, are just just fucking thrown in there, and these people are just like doing their own thing, and they they are like 
ridiculously crazy individuals. They got this chick who's just a, a side chick of one of the gangsters, and she is absolutely insane with a crowbar and everything. She's just a murderous bitch, uh, which is which was uh, very surprising. Like, yeah, there are moments where like, oh man, she's gonna get raped, but no, like she just she is insane but girly at the same time sean is correct it's not a romance film because the way the discussion is going already it's just a gangster film but hey you know the romance aspect is that hey this guy's a boxer he has no hope in life the the girl is sold to the mafia yeah. to the yakuza uh you know her dad's a dick she's a prostitute crackhead and uh, you know they they fell in love because of circumstance, <laughs> and even though that circum the the circumstance is proven, even though they're given an exit, they still chose to stay in there. So there was a choice given, and it, you know, but you know, something happened in the film, right? Something happened. <laughs> um, something occurred, and something <laughs> you know, like you, you see what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> grasping at straws um something happened in the film so i mean i i i pretty much sum up this movie as um you know a classic gangster noir film directed by an infinitely competent director takashi Miike. i always love his stuff i always think it's interesting no matter Cinem what cinematography wise it's great there's a lot of interesting shots um there's a lot of interesting moments uh, the characters are really well-rounded and well thought out. Um, you know, even Tarantino on his worst days is better than like 90% of directors or whatever, you know. So, and I think the same thing could be said of Takashi Miike. But overall, I, I felt like it was just a fun movie to be done. And um, at the center of it was this pastiche of romance that sort of like, you know, the main character is pursuing this romantic relationship, but it was sort of like, it wasn't really the focus of the film. Like it was the focus of the film, but it wasn't. It yeah, you, wasn't, got, you, got, you got swords and gangsters. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not. It's not about I mean, the romance. You know, yeah, you're like, yeah, romance. Good. Sure, sure. Sure. Romance. Sure. But yeah, let's let's see each other. Uh, let's see these characters fuck each other up. <laughs> and that's the key of the film. It's really fun. It's not. It's not deep at all. I mean, you can look into the whole. You know xenophobia whatever it doesn't give a fuck i mean at the end of the day they they kill each other and that's what's that's what's important murder and mayhem all right that, and then that's 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 what we thought of first love uh next up uh verdict all right so um i definitely do appreciate a takashi miike gangster noir film um However, I'd say uh, for a film that stuck in my head and for a film that made me go analyze certain romantic elements in relationships, it, a, a Bosco Rastami's certified copy made me think. It stuck with me. It, it definitely stuck with me in terms of romance and the intricacies of romance. It's not just fucking. It's not just fucking. It's playing. It's, it's, it's playing, it's getting to know a person, it's playing and having this idea of a person and then fighting and seeing what that idea of a person ends up being. And, and in both of those things, in the playing and getting to know somebody and learning about somebody, there's romance. But in the fighting and being at odds with somebody and trying to learn how to care about somebody, Amidst the fighting, there's romance too. There's romance in the playing, romance in the fighting, romance in the beginning, romance in the end. And I think this move, I think Certified Copy sees the romance in each spot and plays with the ideas or conceptions we have of that. And I think that's why I'm, I'm sold on it. I do agree with Ron that it can be a little staid, it can be a little bit boring, it can be. A little bit trying because it because it is a very sort of um, exploratory and meandering film but I, I did find reward with it and if you're a person who 
enjoys to enjoys the idea of meandering and sort of exploring and sort of being in a place with a couple, then I think you can enjoy it too to see it for what it is. So certified copy is my choice. So, you know, because obviously I, I went blind with both of the films, uh, even with my pick, I would have given it really to the actual romance film uh, because, you know, First Love is not really a romance film. It's romantic, gangster, crime thriller, whatever. Uh, but, you know, I, I disagree with this guy. <laughs> the whole idea of romance is absolutely for fucking. The, the desire, even, even, even if you don't show fucking, there should be a desire to fuck. The absolute kind of like, oh shit, they didn't fuck. Or, oh, they fuck, but they can't be together. Or they fuck, but somebody interrupted and now they can't be together. Or they fucked and they lived happily ever after. Here... There's no, there's no, I don't know. Did they want to fuck each other? I mean, the, the girl is absolutely fucking thirsty. But, you know, the guy, I don't know. I don't know, man. Maybe he's, he wants to write a book about art again. That's, that's why, you know, if you're a guy, you know, Sean is being, you know, artsy. It's an artsy fartsy thing. But the, the whole thing with the artsy fartsy is that, you know, maybe you can get laid with, with like a, uh, Champagne. Champagne. You want you want an artsy fartsy romance film and leave the theater with blue balls? I I just I, I can't give it to them. I, I can't give it to to uh, certified copy. It's not certified. It's like <laughs> it's made in China, man. It's made in China. It's counterfeit. Anyway, first love. I have to give it to first love. Okay, so uh, that's what we thought of those two films. Obviously, we disagree heavily on both of them, but uh, we had a fun time watching them. Uh, be sure to tune in next time when you try to find out who was right. Sean or Ron. See you guys. <laughs>